Hi, everybody. So as Oliver has already mentioned, I will be mainly talking about, um, you know, empty evaluation uh, systems and schemes and uh, mainly focusing on how we can, you know, leverage frame semantic parsing um, into empty evaluation. So without further ado, let's, I'll just move ahead. So you, you uh, I mainly have been working with Oliver, Tiago, and Yong. And um, it's interesting because all of us are in like four different time zones and with um, different backgrounds. So it's nice whenever we meet up, we all have different perspectives. So, um, you know, definitely love collaborating with uh, everyone in, on this page here. So uh, today mainly we'll be talking about uh, the, you know, translation, evaluation, some background about it, uh, existing works and, uh, you know, empty metric using frame semantics and the bottlenecks in it. Uh, I'll be also touching upon the work that I have done uh, during my GSOC days and uh, uh, some POCs that we have uh, going on right now. So this, um, this is what mainly we'll be talking about today. So machine translation evaluation, right? So it's a, we have automatic and semi-automatic metrics to evaluate machine translation outputs. And uh, there can be two types, right? Uh, one is the reference-based evaluation where we have a human generated uh, machine translation. Like we have a source sentence and then we have a uh, human animated machine translation. Uh, a human language translation, not a machine translation, of course. And uh, we want to automate that. And so we have machine translation in place. So if you want to evaluate how good um, the output of the machine translation is, we most of the times uh, we would refer, use ref reference-based evaluations where we depend on uh, human-generated translations. But when like the, the reference-based translations, again, th there's a dependency, right? So a better way of that nowadays, um, I wouldn't say nowadays because there are like two, three um, years, that, uh, three, four years rather, we have seen quality estimation going on. So quality estimation is, you know, goes over that bottleneck where we do not need that um, human generated uh, translation and we can directly compare the source and the output, uh, like the machine translation, and uh, you know, have the machine translation evaluation there. Uh, for empty output, we mainly look at three, um, like three places where we want to see how good that is. Uh, one is fluency, uh, one is adequacy, and the other one is hallucination. So for fluency, uh, we would basically judge whether the system output is fluent or not and not focus on how much information it is capturing. For adequacy, it's uh, the opposite. We actually want to focus on how much information um, is being captured in the output. Like if the, the information that is in the source sentence, how much of it is being captured in the uh, translation um, output and uh, like machine translation output. And hallucination is when the machine uh, translation is basically gibberish. So we want to avoid hallucination and we want to uh, capture fluency and adequacy as much as possible. So uh, some of the classical automatic empty metrics would be Bloy, Meteor, Rouge, a, uh, HDER. And all of these uh, depend on human unread reference translations. And they basically are basic n-gram based uh, metrics where given a reference translation, we try to compare how many n-grams are being captured between the uh, source translation, uh, the source sentence and the translated sentence. Uh, uh, of course, there's a huge dependency on the human unread reference translations, and uh, we are unable to capture adequacy and fluency both through all these um, metrics that are existing there. So, well, uh, maybe we'd like to look at one of the uh, works that are there. Uh, it's a recent work that was published at EMNLP 2020. And uh, it's titled Automatic Machine Translation Evaluation in Many Languages via Zero-Shot 
uh, paraphrasing. So uh, uh, they call it in short prism. So they, they uh, look at both with and without human reference. And uh, they had an interesting uh, take on how to capture the, um, uh, you know, uh, to, to estimate the quality of their MT outputs. So they first train a multilingual uh, neural uh, machine translation system. And once they have trained it, they do a zero shot paraphrasing. Uh, they, do, they, they use the trained model to do zero shot paraphrasing. So basically the input would be um, one sentence in say language X and the output would be uh, a paraphrase in the same language. And then whatever probability scores they're getting as shown in this um, uh, diagram, uh, they, they take an average of those probability scores and call that the metric, the, the empty evaluation metric. So that was an interesting take, but, and, and for the data set, they used uh, Europal, Wikimatrix, Global Voices, um, and they, they tried it in 39 languages, but, and the evaluation was on WMT 2019 metric stars, I said. But the one of the main, um, uh, you know, gaps for this would be that they, for when they were calculating, they just looked at one reference translation or paraphrase. So if, if it was um, reference based, and that would be paraphrasing, but if it is not reference based, they would just use a source and a target that was, uh, they were doing quality estimation there. So when they were doing that, um, they were just, for the reference base, they were just looking at one reference translation, whereas there could be multiple references which could be correct. So that would be the main gap here. And so uh, I think that gap, the gap that you were looking, uh, talking about, right? Like uh, one reference, that, that, that is something that we can bridge with frame semantics. And that is why I'm talking about this work because, um, it is not pos humanly possible to have all reference, uh, possible reference sentences uh, to you know, calculate the metric. But if we use some, something uh, network-based like frame networks, which try to, tries to capture um, you know, all kinds of uh, semantic relations, um, all kinds of, uh, you know, for, for each token, for each word, uh, the different relations, are captured in frame network. So that is one bottleneck that we could, um, you know, get over using frame semantics. So in our GSOC work, uh, we uh, try to achieve that. We basically try to create a metric uh, for automatic machine translation evaluation using frame semantics. And to do that, uh, we basically, uh, we had a very simple approach and we didn't have a huge corpus, but we used regression models to, uh, you know, generate translation scores. So we had an annotated corpus. We encoded that uh, using uh, multilingual encoders. Uh, and uh, we fed those encoded uh, representations into regression models. Uh, we tried with different ML regression models, uh, linear regression models, um, uh, SV, SVM regression models. And for the features, uh, we did not just use a sentence as it is. For features, we use the frames, we use the frame elements, the lexical units and the lexical units of the frames and frame elements as well. And we tried with different uh, permutations and combinations of these features. And we uh, we had some interesting results, right? So the, for, yeah, and for the encoders, we used fast text and multilingual word. So firstly, uh, when, when we were doing these permutations and combinations, we saw that you know, the more uh, features we included, the better correlation we got with the so with the output scores. So the we had a set of human scores uh, for around 61 sentences and uh, sentence pairs rather, and uh, we had the output scores from our regression models. So the highest uh, uh, when we had frame, frame element, lexical units, and lexic units of, like of frames and frame elements. Uh, we got the highest Pearson correlation coefficient there. And these are the cosine similarities of sentence similarity scores. And we see that the, if you look at the diagonal, that is where we had uh, the maximum similarity. So light colored boxes basically um, were the maximum similarity that we had. So the alignment was um, 
uh, we were getting like good alignment there. Uh, we also have the uh, root mean square error um, values. And again, we did the same experiment, right? Now with uh, uh, the English Portuguese, the English um, Deutsch sentences, and we use different encodings as well, like fast text and uh, multilingual word. And um, not very surprising there, but what definitely gave us better results because they were like stronger encodings and uh, could capture the semantics much better. So we did get better um, scores there. And uh, for the Pearson correlation coefficient, so we see like it, uh, it conquers, right? So we have uh, less error for RMSE and we have higher Pearson correlation coefficient when we have uh, all the sentence pairs and we have, we have encoded it with BERT. And uh, we tried it with using negative, to just increase the data set, we tried including negative sentence pairs, that is we basically uh, deliberately created uh, annotations where we took random sentences and then scored them zero, but that was, um, it was like an attempt to create, you know, uh, automatically create, you know, enlarge the data set that uh, failed miserably. So uh, that did not give us good scores. So uh, we resorted to just using the human annotated uh, sentences that we had. So this was uh, the experiments that we did for uh, GSOC. Some challenges and gaps that we uh, encountered there were that uh, if, we, if you look at this uh, example, right, we have in English, we have in Portuguese, and we have it in Eng Hindi. It's the same sentence. And uh, we see that all the sentences do not uh, have, uh, you know, uh, Get, have the same frames that are being evoked. So for example, in English, everybody does, does not evoke any uh, frame, whereas, uh, you know, uh, Toro Mundo, sorry if my pronunciation is wrong, uh, evokes some frame, right? It evokes the people frame. Similarly, in Hindi, Harkisi doesn't uh, evoke any frame. So that so that, that is one gap, like not all uh, sentences would evoke uh, frames. Also, if they are evoking frames, if the tokens of uh, the same sentence in two different languages, even, even if they're evoking frames, they might not be same. So, for example, um, if you look at, at, at this, right, interest has uh, emotion directed uh, as the frame. Similarly, uh, the same uh, the equivalent phrase in Portuguese has mental stimulus, the EXP focus. So the, the, the phrase gets captured, but the frames are different. So uh, those are the two challenges that we, um, so yeah, that is what we say, missing frames and dissimilar frames. So those are the two challenges um, and gaps that we uh, came across while doing this work. And we do want to address that in the next work that we do. Sorry, um, okay, yeah. So that is where we proposed frame eval. So we, we want to um, address both adequacy. We want, to, we want to capture adequacy and fluency in, um, you know, when we are trying to um, evaluate the uh, human, human uh, the, the machine translation outputs. And to do that, we take into account universal dependency trees that will encode the syntactic information. And we want to infuse multilingual frame that would encode the semantic information. So we want to combine uh, these two networks and uh, leverage that to uh, calculate or uh, evaluate uh, the quality of the machine translation output. So to do that, uh, this is uh, our proposal. So we, we, S would denote the source sentence, the sentence in source language, and T would uh, denote the uh, sentence in target language. So we have the syntactic and the semantic parsers in place. Would, that would be the universal dependency parser and the multilingual frame net parser. And we would get the networks and uh, of each of these sentences, concatenate them, and pass it through this um, Siamese network uh, structure where uh, since it's a, it's a, it's a, the input is a graph, so we have 
uh, graph attention networks for the Siamese networks. And uh, we would try to, you know, calculate this uh, loss, which would ultimately give us the MP valuation score. So we would train this continuously to make this loss lesser as lesser possible. So this, this is basically uh, the, the, the hypothesis that we have, but one bottleneck of this. So basically the, the idea is to decrease the distance between good translation and increase the distance between bad translations. And uh, the bottleneck of this would be that although we have a lot of syntactic parsers um, for universal um, sentence, uh, for you for universal dependency parsers, but we do not have a strong multilingual frame net parsers. So that brings us um, to what we want to do. So this is basically the data set for, for frame eval that we were looking at. So it's a quality estimation uh, task because we are not relying on any human um, translations here. And uh, this is from the Q, uh, WMT 2020 QE data set, which has uh, basically three types of, um, basically six language pairs, two language pairs for uh, each type of resource. So that would be high resource, that is the ones with most number of annotations. Then we have medium resource, and then we have uh, low resource uh, annotations. And they've used uh, Flores setup to do that. Basically, Z scores would have uh, they have three annotators. Who would we have three different scores? And uh, Z mean would take an average of all three. So that is the data set we are dealing with here. And um, so, yeah, so the bottleneck that I was talking about, right? So, a frame semantic parsing is uh, something that uh, needs attention. And because we do not exactly have a lot of strong multilingual frame semantic parsers out there. So uh, we would want to identify the frames, frame elements uh, from the input text. We have monolingual frame semantic parsers, some of them like uh, we have uh, sling, we have semaphore, uh, but uh, we do have s uh, some work for multilingual frame semantic parsers, we but we don't have a multilingual frame semantic parser per se, uh, to the best of my knowledge. So yeah, as I was saying, so we have semaphore and we have sling, but sling, uh, however, they uh, it is it is mainly made to parse Wikipedia, and they want to create a knowledge base, uh, like for the purpose of knowledge base completion, and they have a very different set of frames that they look at. So they have entity types, top level non entity types, uh, fine grained measure types. So their their um, their frame names are very different than the frame names that we have uh, in our global frame net. So this is an interesting work that was done by Yong uh, in GSOC 2020. So this is known as frame projection. So different from frame semantic parsing, but can be uh, very useful um, in the absence of a multilingual frame semantic parser. So given uh, the source uh, and the target sentences, and if we have the frames in place in the uh, source language, then the model can be used to predict the frames in the target language. So uh, basically a projection of the frames from the source language to the target language. This can be very well used to create silver data sets, but the, the uh, drawback of this work would be to, uh, like you, to predict the frames in target language, you will need a frame, uh, the frames in source language. For, uh, like you need to have, a uh, sentence annotated in source language, and you need to have the perfect translation for that to uh, annotate frames in that. So uh, that is the work. This has been already published, I think, in LREC this year. So yes. So for future work, uh, we firstly want to create the robust data sets for multilingual semantic parsing. And uh, what we realize is, uh, the order of work would be you want to have a multilingual frame semantic parser first. Um, and also, and that would help us build the uh, uh, metric evaluation system, an automatic metric evaluation system using frames uh, to evaluate machine translation. 
So that would be the next step. And we obviously want to extend the existing frame eval system that we have to accommodate more languages. Um, yeah, so that is mostly it. So I, I know I might have rushed in a few places. So if you have uh, questions, please feel free to ask.